Today, this gets working. Let's find out how. Component selection is done. Case is designed. I finished the schematic. Wrote plenty of software. Hopefully bug free. And the board layout. Done. Here are the steps to bring up the new boards. Check design with breadboard. Solder the board components. Test the new LCD ECA installation. Test the analog system using the new LCD. Solder the Ethernet connections and test with sound. Get the external power supply working. Case modifications and final test. Before sending boards to fabrication, check with breadboard just to make sure my design works okay. Once I receive the boards, some soldering. Oops. Testing just the LCD. No analogs yet. And it works. Mount and test that ECA board. And it needs to clear the two microprocessor boards. I found exactly two tall connectors in my collection of parts. Sometimes in life, things just work out. Here is the tall header mounted. Not elegant, but it works for now. That extra pin is for a future modification. Testing the analogs. First time all the boards will be running. HPS, ECA, TPS, Power, monitoring, keyboard, LCD, shanks, hammers, screws. Adding the analog board doesn't seem to break anything. Signals look okay. For testing analogs, the display shows three signals. Red lines track vertical hammer position. Orange lines show the maximum hammer position. Green lines are the velocity. It's kind of cool. For testing, I am trying to move the hammer slowly and avoid hitting the virtual string. This test checks the analog board, correctly tracks hammer position. All the keys seem to work. Next, hitting the virtual strings and checking the velocity bars. Also seems to work. I am not connected to a sound engine yet. For that, I need ethernet, which is coming up. Checking teensy to teensy signals. I must reliably transfer 24 8-bit values with an asynchronous design. Getting Ethernet working and now test with piano sounds. For Ethernet, I need to connect these Teensy ports here to the PCB here. And I want detachable processors, so I need a header with this dimension. This is the closest I could find, and with two, it might work. On the Teensy, use this connector, soldered on the bottom. Here is a side view. Ethernet connector. It's a tight fit. Soldering this connector to the PCB is fairly easy, but the Teensy connector is a challenge because to get the required precise alignment, it must be soldered while connected. That increases the mass the soldering iron must heat, so I used quite a bit of flux. I also added the Ethernet connector. external power supply. This is a 5 volt supply I purchased for the, oh, it works. The final step is fitting in the box. I will cut openings for ethernet and power, measure, The final product. I wrote a short melody for testing. A 
And now, a victory lap. The LCD extends above the box top, so a lid won't fit. I could shorten the stands, but then the LCD hits the ECA. I also need an opening for 24 HPS wires, and the processor needs airflow, so I can't seal this box. Okay. That should give room for airflow, make the box taller, and a place for the 24 HPS wires. Now the final result. There is a significant software development effort to get this all working, and I can share about that software in a future video.